Injury news for Thierry Henry, history for Toronto FC, and two of the luckiest goals you'll see all season, next on The Daily. Hey everybody, happy Monday and welcome to another edition of The Daily here with Greg Lawless. I'm Nick Fursh. Uh, looking back at some highlights from the weekend, we're going to start with some injury news for Thierry Henry. Could be out up to a month for the New York Red Bulls after suffering a hamstring injury over the weekend against the New England Revolution. The Red Bulls get the win, Greg, but some tough news for Thierry Henry. Yeah, absolutely. And head coach Hans Bakke came out and said very uh, plainly in this one, it is a disaster. However, they did get the 1-0 yeah. victory over New England, their first shutout victory of the year. Ryan Mira, the rookie goalkeeper, with his first shutout of the year. And they played with several other guys who were not regular starters anyway. I mean, the back line had something like 800 MLS minutes to their name yeah. going into this match. So for them to have held on for as long as they did to get the 1-0 victory and so against a New England team that was pressing somewhat to get the, the equalizer, it's very good for them. And Bakke was very happy with that. And don't forget, also, Thierry Henry did get the goal in this one. A beautiful chip of Matt Reese, the goalkeeper, puts him with the nine on the season at the top of the Golden Boot race. You mentioned a league-leading ninth goal for Thierry Henry before suffering the injury, and Dax McCarty also had a yes. great game yeah. for the New York Red Bulls. A big 1-0 win over the New England Revolution. Well, the best team in the Western Conference, the San Jose Earthquakes, they got another win over the weekend against the Philadelphia Union. This one on the road, and this one courtesy of two second-half substitutes. Marvin Chavez and Steven Lenhardt hooking up for two goals, a 2-1 win over the Philadelphia Union. The Quakes keep rolling. Well, the Union, I think they probably felt they were going to get an equal, yeah. get a, at least lever, uh, some of the points out of this one. They're playing at home. They did okay. They got the equalizer in this one. But then you're right. Lenhardt comes through with a header at the end. They let him float into the box a little bit. And the cross is beautiful from uh, Chavez from the right side. And I don't know what it is. Lennart comes in, he is a beast when he's coming off the bench. I think, though, he definitely wants to be a starter, and I think Frank Yallop would like to get him some more starting minutes. I'm not sure they feel his fitness is quite there yet, but he's devastating off the bench, and he's a big part, I think, for why San Jose can look forward down the season. They don't need to only rely on Chris Wondolowski anymore. They can go to Lenny, as they like to call him, for some added firepower up top. His first two goals of the season, the Quakes are now unbeaten in their last six, but they've got an interesting challenge coming up next weekend. They're at home against DC United. Well, from the top of the Western Conference to the bottom of the Eastern Conference, that's where we find Toronto FC after another rough week for these guys. They are now 0-7 this season, tying a MLS record from 1999. Uh, worst start to a season we've ever seen after this heartbreaking loss at Real Salt Lake. We thought they were going to get a draw on this one. It wasn't to be. I think everybody thought they were going to get a draw. I think even Real Salt Lake thought that yeah. Toronto were going to get a draw out of this one. And I honestly think that the only people in the world that were disappointed that Toronto didn't get the draw on this one were the Real Salt Lake players because I think everyone's heart went out to them. The, the TFC, they, they played their hearts out in this one and I felt like they had done everything they could to get this draw. They just wanted that one result, get over the hump, and it didn't come through. Johnny Steele with a uh, stoppage time uh, winner, actually. Um, and really, they let him float free at the top of the box and he got the goal. Kyle Beckman with the assist on it. And after the ball went in, you saw about four yeah. Toronto players just collapse in just almost demoralization about this. And I think there's some real issues now in terms of the, the mentality of them. I think they came close, though, so that might give them a little bit of positivity. Got to say, one of the lasting images so far this season is Milos Kosic, the Toronto FC yes. goalkeeper, lying on the ground with his yep. hands uh, over his face. Toronto FC is going to get a chance, though, this week. They're in the Amway Canadian Championship. They're at Montreal on Wednesday. Of course, it's not an MLS league game, but maybe a chance to right the ship for Toronto FC. Well, what's a look back at the weekend without a look at some of the best goals from week eight? Two, uh, I'm going to say these are lucky ones, but you can, we can argue. You. Young Pio Lee <laughs> from the Vancouver Whitecaps and Marco Papa from the Chicago Fire. Start with Young Pio Lee. They get that, this is the winner over the Columbus Crew, so the yeah. Whitecaps get a nice win at Crew Stadium. It's a free kick that sort of fools Andy Gruenbaum. What do we make of it? Well, look, I think Andy Gruenbaum, Gruenbaum should have done better on this. Obviously, a goalkeeper, when you're beaten from that distance on a free kick, you can see the flight, flight of the ball all the way through through and he lets it go over his head into the net. Saying that, you have to give Lee some credit for putting the ball where he did. Who knows what sort of things happen in front of Grunebaum to distract him, so maybe there's a little bit of a team effort in this one. Mm -hmm. So is there luck involved? Of course, but there's also a certain amount of skill. It's like the Eric Hasley goal from last year when he bashed in the upper corner against Seattle. 
There was a lot of luck involved in that too, but there was a ton of skill to be able to get that shot off. Well, how about the goal from Marco Papa and a 2-1 loss to the Seattle Sounders. This goal came late out at Toyota Park. Didn't do enough for the Chicago Fire, but nonetheless pretty impressive. Directly from the corner over Michael Sperning for the 2-1 uh, loss. I think you always look at a goalkeeper when you're beaten on a direct shot into the, uh, from a corner kick. However, Papa did well to get a really good flight of the ball. The height was perfect to get over Sperning. Against a veteran keeper like Sperning, yeah. to be able to beat him like that at the far post, you have to give Papa some credit for this one. So you can call him lucky. I'm going to say there's a certain amount of skill involved in both of them. Well, either way, you're more than likely going to see both of these goals up for the AT&T MLS Goal of the Week. Five worthy choices. You're going to find those out on Monday. That's where uh, you can vote on MLSsoccer.com. A couple other things we want to mention. Extra Time Radio, the latest edition of our podcast, comes out on Monday. And that Power 5 series, Greg, that we've been rolling out, uh, pretty much all season long. We're going to count down the early season headlines, the five biggest storylines we've been looking at at MLSsoccer.com.